Good morning, everyone. Welcome to class 847 today. Uh, uh, today, I'm going to talk about the present, uh, the past, present, and future of machine learning and deep reinforcement learning. In other words, uh, this could be on history, history of machine learning. In other words, I would say this class today will give you overview of the enforcement learning and alpha especially I would say deep enforcement learning and alpha will be the main subject of class. So because now you understand the basics of machine learning and training algorithms, at this moment is good time for for me to introduce the main subject of the class so, so that even though we have two more month of classes today's the lecture will give you the overview idea of, of the class following today's class i'm gonna uh, uh, talk about uh, so today we i'm gonna talk about class overview but meanwhile in may uh, i will give you a uh, uh, I will give you lectures on RNN, LSTM, CNN, and again, those are the very typical uh, machine learning models. And some of them are, will be used in the enforcement learning and AlphaGo. And in June, I will spend most of time to talk about deep reinforcement learning. I will give you lectures on the basic principles of uh, reinforcement learning. And then I will combine the knowledges with deep, uh, deep learning. And eventually, at the end of class, I will give you some examples of uh, deep reinforcement learning, especially uh, emphasizing the AlphaGo. Let me start with the future of machine learning. This is very, very personal perspectives. Let me, uh, because um, machine learning will replace our brain. So I will draw a figure to show our face. This is my face and this is eye smiling. This is my nose. I have a hole here and I have a mouth with teeth. I have a little bit of hair, not much because I'm getting older and we have ears. Um, so initially, CNN model start with uh, machine learning model with start with the CNN. Uh, that is a convolutional new uh, uh, neural network. It usually uh, developed for the purpose of image recognition. So, she and, uh, so two weeks later, I'm gonna explain the convolutional neural network machine model. machine learning model. The second model, which is popular in, this, uh, uh, in these days is um, RNN and LSTM. RNN means the recurrent neural network and LSTM is represent for long-term, short-term memory. Uh, those uh, models are usually useful for translation or text generation or question and answering. From next Monday, I'm gonna talk a, a lot about the RNN and LSTM. I think this is more like a historical order. And this is also RNN and LSTM is very most popular uh, machine learning model. 
the other models we can think of, I can uh, talk about is GPT-3. And this may be useful for composition, speech, writing. So another model which we will shortly discuss in this class will be uh, GPT-3 that was developed by, I, I think, Google uh, OpenAI. It need a lot of computing power and memories. So these are the models which represent, I think, our brain. And these are the model, machine learning models. We're going to talk very deeply in this semester. Also, there is another model, say, GAN, and that is useful for creation purpose. You can create art or music using generative advisory network. Also, I'm going to spend a couple of hours, a couple of weeks uh, to explain the generative advisory network model. The next model, which eventually I would like to talk about is deep reinforcement learning. That is the core part of my class uh, in this semester. Deep reinforcement learning is useful for games such as AlphaGo, game, or investment, or engineering. Once again, I'd like to say, uh, you're going to conduct some term project in this semester with your student. And the um, subject will be you, you have will apply the deep reinforcement learning for engineering subject. I think these are the very um, common uh, machine learning model which are very popular in these days. Still, new uh, models are coming out in these days, and probably some of uh, researchers and companies are working on to improve these models. <clears throat> but uh, interesting thing is that uh, these models are kind of separate models. That means when you want to uh, develop some image recognition, probably you need a CNN. Sometimes if you want to interpret some text message or speeches, you have to use RNN. And sometimes if you want to uh, develop or uh, create some art or music, probably you have to use GAN. Also for some engineering or game purpose, you may have to use deep reinforcement learning. So each model has different purpose and different structures. And sometime in the future, we're going to uh, have uh, some artificial general intelligence General Intelligence Model. This model will be a, a single model. So it, this new model will combine all these models together. So it's going to be a kind of multi-domain and multi uh, multi-mode machine learning. So in order to uh, uh, develop this kind of artificial general intelligence machine learning model, we need to have more complete uh, computing power. And also, of course, we have to develop all the back propagation equations and chain rules. There are a lot of human efforts are needed to achieve artificial general intelligence machine learning model. But right now, unfortunately, for each purpose, we have different type of machine learning model. And in the future, I would suggest that if we combine this with ethics, emotions, philosophy, philosophy, 
or religion. Let's assume that uh, we develop a new human network by combining this uh, multimodal machine learning with human network, we eventually will be developing artificial human. Probably I'm, my expectation is in 2030 or from 2050, you will see that some companies will have artificial human. These are the overview of the machine learning future. Once again, if I will summarize right now, is that we have CNN model, RNN model, GPT-3, alternative advice network, and deep reinforcement learning. We're gonna cover all this subject in this semester, probably mostly in May and June. And right now, all these uh, models have separate structure and separate backpropagation models and separate purpose and different groups are developing different models. But right now, but in the near future, like 10 years later, I expect that we're gonna have an um, artificial general intelligence machine learning model, uh, though it will be a multi-model machine learning. And it, this single model will contain all these uh, functions and all these models. That's why I'm saying that it is multi-mode machine learning model. In order to do that, we need to have a lot of effort in terms of machine learning scientists and machine learning engineers, especially we need a, a strong power of computing power. Now, in the more future, like uh, 20 or 30 years later, I believe that if we, we, because artificial general intelligence, if we will use incorrectly, this will be a kind of, we will become a bad machine. So we have to put some, um, we have to combine some human network, I would say. It includes the ethics, emotions, philosophy, and religions, and such a uh, human has. And then if we combine this uh, artificial general intelligence with human network, eventually we will be able to uh, produce artificial human. Probably in that age, like 20 or 30 years later, when you are married and you have a children's, and then uh, we will have some um, challenges. How are we gonna uh, live and how are we gonna uh, su survive in this environment? But in technological uh, sense, I think this is the overall perspective of machine learning's future. And in other words, I think these are the sub, uh, in my class, probably, we will stay somewhere here. That is the end of our class. We are not going to go up to the human network and artificial human. But in this semester, I'm going to give you basics of all these models and what is gonna be the future. <clears throat> now, I would like to give you the historical view of machine learning. from 1950 to 1960, 1970, artificial intelligence started at those days. I was born somewhere here. Um, maybe you were born somewhere here or 1990, 2000, 2010, and 2020, and 2030. First thing I would like to uh, uh, introduce the history of machine learning is that in 1956, John McCarthy introduced the terminology of AI at the Dartmouth conference. So artificial intelligence, that terminology started 1956, then might be the when your mother or father was born or even before then. And in 1957, the concept of perceptron was introduced in 1957. Uh, you remember that in the deep neural network, perceptron is very basic element, building block 
to construct whole network. That is perfectly true. And uh, the concept of perceptron started 1957. And in 1986, 1986, uh, Jeffrey Hinton introduced multi-layer perceptron. Perceptron and 1989, first CNN was introduced. As I mentioned, as I discussed before, CNN is a kind of uh, is a machine learning learning model to for the purpose of image recognition. So I is replaced by CNN. So that started. 1989. I think AI started from 1956 and it is still going on. I, I believe that machine learning, which are the main subject of our class, machine learning actually started from 1986 where people are talk, start to talking about multi-layer perceptron and first the CNN. Now, another interesting point is that NVIDIA, NVIDIA started, NVIDIA first introduced the GPU in 1997. And as I mentioned many times, a machine learning algorithm cannot do by himself. He needs to have a strong uh, computing power. And the most important part of the computing power came from GPU and DRAM. So it is interesting to see that CNN and GPU, uh, GPU came to our world in a very similar time of period. And 1998, LUNET 5, that is the advanced model of CNN, was introduced by uh, Lukun. I think he's at the Montreal University. Or 1997, RNN was firstly introduced. I think those are the really the, um, the spring time of machine learning. And then 2013, HBM was on the market and ZX standard was introduced in 2013. And I, I'm, I would like to emphasize that HBM is gonna be a big machine for to improve the computing power and 19, 16, 2016, HBM paper was published from paper was published from Terra Lab. I personally believe that we are really uh, our laboratory and students are really uh, contributing a lot to the progress of machine learning because of HBM because it started from our students idea and we started a lot of design issues associated with the HBM. Now, another interesting thing is that in 2014, Torch was introduced. That is the frame, um, is the, is, we call it framework. Means that if you want to develop a new uh, machine learning model or you want to uh, design your own coding, you can, you, you can work on the torch. Or also 2015, and TensorFlow was a work framework was introduced in 2015. That really is a, a important milestone for the time of machine learning period. And 
I, I believe that 2015, deep reinforcement learning was also introduced and 2015, Alpago, uh, I think 2017, Al, Alpago was, Alpago Zero was introduced uh, to the public. And I think also I would like to say 2017, deep reinforcement learning was introduced. It was demonstrated using Altari game. And probably 2020, I think AI engineering is introduced by TerraLab. I think from 2005, we started deep uh, learning, uh, probably somewhere here, we have deep reinforcement learning. Of course, the enabler of this progress of this uh, the machine learning is associated with data size, computing power, power. I think this is a short a history of mach machine learning. Let me briefly uh, summarize the, this part again. Now I'm trying to give you a brief history of machine learning. As I mentioned uh, before, it, in this uh, slides, I would like to give you what kind of machine learning models we have and what is gonna be future. Especially I was talking about artificial general intelligence and artificial human. And also this is a kind of overview of class in this semester. I'm gonna talk many of the subject details because right now we understand backpropagation and gradient descent activation functions and softmax and entropy. And we also understand what are the uh, hyperparameters and so on. So. Those are really basics to understand machine learning models such as CNN, RNN, and GPT-3, and deep reinforcement learning and generative advisory network. But before I start to talk about details about these models from next week, I would like to give you the overview of these models and future. This slide will give you idea about that. Now, I'd like to talk about the machine learning with respect to the time scale that is called history. And uh, because uh, in this uh, class, I was talking about the perceptron and perceptron is the really, really the basic part of the uh, building block of machine learning. It is composed of input vectors and summations and activation functions, output connections. And uh, that, that is called perceptron and the, the single perceptron concept was introduced in 1957, more than 60 years ago. But however, multi-layer perceptron and backpropagation concept was introduced in 1986. That is the really uh, starting point of machine learning. And then using very simple com computer, First, the CNN was uh, demonstrated in 1989. It, it is a multi-layer structures and multi-layer perceptrons. Now, 1997, NVIDIA introduced the GPU. By combining CNN and GPU, uh, Lukun, a professor at Canada, was able to show, demonstrate LUNET. That is a kind of a CNN model to have much better improvement of image recognition at the time. Now, the accuracy of this uh, CNN model is approaching near the human uh, level. Probably sometimes in these days, it is more uh, accuracy is higher than ordinary people. And also in 1997, first RNN was introduced. That is the really starting point of deep, deep, deep learning where a number of layers increasing significantly. And now 
because we need more computing power that is related to, I personally believe, HBM in the middle of 2010. And at that time, I, uh, we will have chance to work with some companies associated with HBM. And one of my students did a, a master degree thesis on HBM. Now he's a professor at some universities in Korea. And I think that is the HBM. Uh, at some point in this semester, I'm going to talk about HBM and through silicon VI and vertical integrations and why do we need that and that kind of thing. And those are also very important milestone, what I believe. Another important milestone is the framework in where you can play the game, you can develop your own models and you can extend or you can combine some different models. And it is, we call it framework. And probably in the middle of April, uh, one of teaching assistant will come to our class and will demonstrate some frameworks and how to use that, how you can download them and how you can use that. There are two types of framework. One is called Torch, PyTorch, and the other one is uh, TensorFlow. And you can choose either one of them. That is also a very important uh, milestone. And in the middle of that point, there, uh, there was a publication from, I think, Nature, uh, Nature and it, they introduced a deep reinforcement learning that is a very core part of our class. In this semester, they demonstrated deep reinforcement learning using the Atari game. And near that time, also uh, uh, Google introduced AlphaGo and that combine that is also kind of a deep reinforcement learning. It combines CNN with the uh, reinforcement learning to introduce deep reinforcement learning. And uh, also in this class, we we're gonna have some experience of AI engineering that is based on deep reinforcement learning. I think in that regard, in the middle of 2010, we started the reinforcement learning. Now we are in a in somewhere here. Let's move a little bit on the history of uh, machine learning. Now we are in 2021, maybe in 10 years, we are at 2030, 2040, and 2050. I'm not going to talk about over 2050 because I'm not sure I will be there at the time. Probably if we can uh, uh, overcome vaccines and all the aging issues, probably I may go up to 2100. Probably not. Um, so I personally believe that uh, in year 2015, we should have post HBM, that is the research subject of uh, Terra Lab students. And Jun Sang and Heian will contribute this area for the future. And probably somewhere at point I expect artificial general intelligence will appear. And po probably in 2040, we may see artificial human. And beyond that, in order, we need more computing power. Probably we have quantum computing may help us or new devices beyond CMOS. Right now, our CMOS devices are, are consuming too much uh, electrical power. We cannot have this artificial human or artificial general intelligence in your smartphone unless you have uh, enormous amount of battery capacity or you need new devices. And uh, what kind, what are the post -hum, uh, HBM? I think it is going to be three dimensional structure probably it will have a kilowatt range of computing power and probably number of TSV might be over uh, millions 
And also, we will have an important consideration of summer uh, cooling issues. And so driving force for the next generation uh, AI probably is automotive vehicle, Bitcoin, or post-corona. And also I believe that data size and power will be uh, will steadily will be increased. Uh, those are the second part of uh, uh, history, future history, which I expect. Uh, because you are still young students, I hope that you pay attention to these slides and you can catch up one of these ideas and one of these subjects for your future career. I'm 100% sure that you will have very good future if you choose one of these issues. So now let's go back to the class again, overview of class again. I start with the future of machine learning models, starting from CNN, RNN, and GPT-3. And also I was talking about a historical view of machine learning. It started from Perceptron, and these are probably depending on uh, researchers and engineers, each, each people may have different overviews, but I personally believe these are really important milestones of artificial intelligence and machine learning, deep learning, and deep reinforcement learning. I think our class is somewhere here. Also, I was mentioning the future of the uh, machine learning and as I mentioned many times, computing power is really uh, necessary to have this future artificial general intelligence and artificial human. In order to have a super uh, computing power, new, new, we need to have a new semiconductor uh, systems and devices. One of them, a candidate, are post-HBM. The other candidates are, we have to develop a new devices beyond the CMOS that could be different type of silicon devices, or it could be kind of neuromorphic devices, or also I'm not 100% sure, but quantum computing is one of the candidates and some people are paying a lot of uh, uh, research fundings and resources to uh, uh, search for the uh, opportunities of quantum computing. And the applications of this artificial general intelligence and machine learning in the future could be automotive vehicle, Bitcoin, and post-corona such as vaccine development and a while um, remote uh, medical service, it's like that. Now, our class are really centered around this deep reinforcement learning and deep uh, alpha Now, um, let's move on to uh, the subject on AlphaGo. There are four or three or five different models are being used, three to five machine learning and deep reinforcement learning models are being used in AlphaGo. And I would like to uh, introduce the most basic and simple structures, machine learning model, that is called pi row. Pi means the pi means that it is a policy network. Row means the very simple uh, network. So, it, I'm, for about thirty minutes from now, I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the deep reinforcement learning, especially that are used in AlphaGo. So uh, you, you may have some difficulties to follow up this lecture today, but just listening and watch out and 
enjoy it. At the end of this semester, after two months, you will understand this. And also some of these concepts will be used for your term project in the class or for your master or PhD degree thesis. So even though at this moment, it is a little bit premature to talk about some models used in AlphaGo, but I think I would like to give you some motivations and overall perspectives uh, about what is going on in this class and what was going on in AlphaGo Deep Reinforcement Learning. Now, it is a very simple structure. It has multi-layer structure. It has input layer, it has hidden layer, it has an output layer. I would say probably number of layer could be uh, over 13. I'm not sure, but uh, that is not pre uh, precise numbers in in the publications. I, I just guess it, uh, it has that. And it is connectivity. And of course, this is hidden layer. And this output layer. Uh, it has input layer. Then it will have a, a connectivity matrix, weight matrix WIJ. In this very simple model of AlphaGo, it uses a linear uh, activation function. For the simplicity of structure and to reduce the comp uh, comp com uh, computational time, they are not using any sigmoid function or softmax functions or uh, relu functions. In this very simple structure that is called pyrrole DNN, they are using uh, li just linear activation function. There's no non-linearity. So it's a kind of, it is a linear network. So back propagation will be very easy because the gradient of this linear function is just straight line or constant. So it is very simple, but still I believe that I do not have precise number, but still winning rate of this uh, pyro DNN in Go game was more than 40%. So it should be as much better than amateur player. So what is gonna be input? Input is gonna be Go game. That will be the input. For example, let's assume it has a game going on. This is white stone, black stone. You, we have to decide where to put on the next stage. So it is 19 by 19 grid. So input will be 19 by 19 by N. N could be one to 18. That is the input vector. Why 19, 19? Because it has the grid size of Go game plate is 19 by 19. So I think 381 is the size of input to the this neural network. Especially why do we have extra dimension N because whether this uh, position stone is there or not, or is that white stone or black stone, or there are a lot of rule associated with N. So it is just kind of, uh, 10,000 10, or less than million kind of input. Output is an activation. A1 to A19 by 19. So this network will recommend which position of next white stone is the best chances to win. So I think I'm not sure, but it, output could be soft math. This is my guess. Then it will have a probability of a winning. So having this output, probably it will recommend certain position. Let's assume this is AJ. AJ might have 0.09999. That will be the output of this gym neural network.
So because uh, so this current game station, current game environment will be the input of this deep neural network, and that is gonna and it will calculate a probability distribution of output of output vector is 19 by 19 size. It is called forward propagation. Now we have human human record human go game record it recommend aj this point so co let's compare our output with the previous uh, output that is aj dash that is our labeled output or our target output if we have a j and a j dash, we can uh, uh, determine what host function. As I as I remember in this high row, very simple uh, machine policy network used in AlphaGo. That is, uh, I think, is I think mean square error, and then we can go to a back propagation. What does that back propagation means that you can update update WIJ. I think actually uh, this is not going to here. Actually, this is going to that. You update WIJ. So let's assume that you have more than, let's assume you have more than slick, uh, millions of game record and we call it as environment and you repeat this for the propagation and backward propagation i think this is the okay if i have a students and i would like to develop alphago or game team neural network I would like to start with this approach. First thing we have to do, I think we have to do is we have to collect data uh, records. It could be collected from the internet or we can connect it with the association with Go Games or Go, uh, X, Go Champion players. We can collect this uh, game record because to train this uh, a neural network we need a record and then we design it and then we play the game and then because by comparing the output of this deep neural network and the uh, previous record this record may came from master master level uh, players that could be the reference AJ and by comparing that we can update the WIJ and that is called back propagation. I think these are the first step to develop um, AlphaGo. And now because we, we understand the activation functions and the, the neural network structures and cost functions and back propagation and gradient descent, you may have some a good idea about uh, the structure. I remember that in some publications, they say it has about 40% winning date. Not bad. Uh, when they are playing with the master's level player, they are having more than 40% of winning rate. Even though it has a simple size of network, it has a size of 19 input size 19 by 19 by n and output size is 19 by 19 and if you have good uh, performance gpu is not a big deal so it maybe it takes more time to collect the, the data i think uh, these are uh, the, uh, the the first step i would say if i am on alphago or demand engineer there might be from level one to level 10 to develop AlphaGo. I think this is the really the 
first step to develop the AlphaGo model. Maybe in the history, uh, AlphaGo was introduced to 2017 or 2015. Then I would say that they may start it around 2010, this point, probably somewhere there when they have good amount of uh, GPU computing power and they have a framework like a TensorFlow, they may have started the, like this kind of DNN and um, in, in the beginning of 2010. I mentioned that this is a policy network. Why is that? Because it will recommend activation that is called AIA2AJ. Um, in some cases, let's assume that you have CNN, um, uh, the machine learning models. If you show them a picture image, it will give you classification whether it is tiger or cat. That is a, a kind of uh, that that output is a kind of classification. Right now, in this case, input is a, a st current state, a current stage of Go game. Uh, that it, later on, I will say that this is Markov decision process. Markov decision process means that you can decide next actions only under current condition. You don't know, you don't need to know about the history or past status of the Go played game. As far as you have current image of your Go game played, you can determine next action. And that kind of environment is called Markov decision process. And when I am talking about deep reinforcement learning, I'm going to talk a lot about MDP. MDP is called Markov Decision Process. And Go game is exactly the Markov Decision Process case. And hopefully in the engineering world, there are a lot of cases where we can define environment in which we can predict or estimate next uh, action or state on the current understanding of, of current environment. And I, I sincerely hope that there will be certain cases of engineering that uh, we can uh, have this kind of market decision uh, process, and then we can apply deep reinforcement learning. That is the main theme of our class in May or, or June. Anyhow, this network, uh, this network is recommend your next action. And your next action, uh, and that kind of network is called policy network. And the symbol a symbol pi represents the policy network and the policy net, there might be many different ways to construct policy network, but in this semester, in, in this class, we're gonna use DNN, Deep Neural Network, to construct policy network. Uh, this is a little bit of a uh, overview of the enforcement learning, which are gonna be the main focal point of our class. Um, now let's move a little bit. Uh, uh, let's move a little bit um, further. Now I'd like to talk about uh, SL means self learning. In the previous uh, model, uh, policy network based on this linear linear models. And we is a very fast. Uh, I, I would say it's a really a fast model. For example, when uh, Isador and Alpago was playing the Go game, uh, there are some intermissions be before the player put the stones, and it could be one minute or two minutes or three minutes. During that time, GPU computer will play a lot of games internally, and then they decide the best actions and they give us feedback. When they are doing uh, that kind of uh, uh, hidden uh, games behind the uh, scene, the game was, should be played very fast. Thousand or million game has to be played in parallel. In parallel means GPU is necessary. Also, 
uh, because they have to play many games in short period of time, like what in one minute, this kind of pyro uh, policy network is very useful. But there is another model that is being used is the self-learning. As I mentioned that this model has about 40% winning date. I would say, I would expect this may have more than a 50% or 60% winning date. And what are the structure of that? It has CNN structures. CNN represent for convolutional neural network. In convolutional neural network, they, if they have convolution layer, or pulling layer at the end it has fully connected layer and compared to the uh, uh, simple dnn it is much more comp a little bit more complicated uh, especially of course it has it has perceptron and it has forward propagation and it will have backward propagation. And uh, sometime in the middle of May, I'm gonna spend a couple of weeks to explain the perceptron and forward propagation, backward propagation of CNN. And, and it used DELU, DELU activation function and convolution is the kind of matrix calculation. Using filter. I'm going to give you uh, details about this mathematical description of convolution and pooling layer later on, but CNN is used mostly used for image recognition. AlphaGo started using this CNN model and input was actually input was 19 by 19 by 18. I think that is what I remember. And input image, input, input image is just like go plate image. Then it will recommend action also it will, you will have aj dash that is coming from a reference or target from the previous game previous at this moment very interesting is that this reference may come from human or computer game that is, uh, in the previous slide, they started to train this pyro model using the human game, human. So the amount of data size might be limited, but here, when they are playing game using this policy network, we can generate another uh, game record, or sometimes they can play each other. And then we can have much more data size to train them. Of course, here, we, this, this direction is for the propagation, for the propagation. And by comparing A1, AJ, and AJ dash, we can uh, define cost function and we can do the back propagation to update WIJ. WIJ is actually coming from filter a filter matrix little bit uh, a, a little bit complicated compared to previous uh, dnn but my point at this moment is that if you have more computing power and time we can apply some advanced uh, deep neural network because of non linearities here computing power will be much higher than these linear models but this pi is also 
very useful and being used for policy network. Uh, I think these are the, the basic step stone to develop AlphaGo. Now, this is not the end. This is the, really the second level of development of deep, the deep learning, deep reinforcement learning based AlphaGo. Let's move on a little bit on that. Uh, this is a little bit difficult subject right now, but right now I would like to talk about deep reinforcement learning used in AlphaGo. Here, up to now, we, we used just deep neural network policy network. Now, I would like to talk about deep reinforcement learning. Right now, let's assume that we have a policy network. I say pi role or pi uh, self-learning. In other words, I would say it may have pi theta as A. Uh, the, uh, this, this description is more likely related to reinforcement learning. At this moment, let's assume that this policy network is described by pi theta as A. S, S means state, A, A means action. Um, at this moment, just accept this wording. And when I'm going to give you lectures on reinforcement learning, we're going to talk a lot about this wording state, action, policy network. Theta means WIJ. The purpose of our training is that to optimize theta to develop policy network, which has the highest winning uh, percentage compared to another computer or compared to human player. Now, let's assume that we are playing a game. Current state is let's assume that white stone is there and black stone is there. We want to put some next, we want to uh, decide the next position. And this is going to be input to policy network. And then we have agent. So let's assume that we, we copy this network to the agent and it play the game. And we ha you have another agent there. It could be human or it could be another policy network. It play a game and continue the game. In computer-wise, it is an iteration. When you play the game, eventually we, you will obtain a reward. If you are you win, win it is plus one. If you lose, it will minus one. And eventually you will continue this loop and until the end and you, you evaluate your actions and it gives you the feedback. Okay, you decide AJ and you have AJ. By having this AJ, you can do the back propagation and you update When you are updating this, your network, that algorithm is called gradient descent. And that methodology is called the in force. And mathematically, I would say that can be represented by
at this moment, it is very difficult to explain that. Uh, but in later classes, we're going to talk about gradient descent. You know, when we did the back propagation in the previous classes, I, I we spent some time to develop chain rules. Now we're going to have another kind of chain rule or back propagation rule that is representing by the policy network and the word. So in uh, reinforcement learning, we're going to define uh, this policy network and the turn and gradient distance. And using this gradient, we're going to update WIJ. We just play game with a human or another agent and agent. And you keep uh, updating the WIJ and eventually you're going to have very competitive policy network. That is the main part of uh, uh, deep reinforcement learning. So in order to understand this uh, deep reinforcement learning, of course, you have to understand deep neural network and CNN and that kind of principle. Also, this area is called reinforcement learning. So our classes, in some sense, we have to understand the deep neural network and reinforcement learning especially when the agent one and agent two are playing games, they are using um, uh, Monte Carlo tree search method, or sometimes they are using Monte Carlo method, or sometimes they are using temporal difference method. We are going to talk a lot about uh, this methodology because when they are playing games, there are a lot of cases and how are we going to evaluate their place? In each event, and finally, their action will lose or win or lose. And this loop, the uh, uh, reinforcement learning loop will give you the winning percentage of your action. Having those winning percent of those actions, that is called value network. And during the classes, I'm going to a lot talk about policy network as well as value network. And value network will give you what is the winning percentage of each actions. And by comparing your action and the reward and value network uh, result of your reinforcement learning, you're going to update your policy network. And those are uh, the main uh, procedure of deep reinforcement learning. At this moment, uh, I was talking about policy network, value network, and also I was uh, talking about agent one, agent two, and environment. Also, I was talking about the world and the enforcement learning algorithm. Also, I was talking about Monte Carlo tree search and Monte Carlo method and temporal difference method. These are the main subjects of the enforcement learning, which I will talk about in May and June. At this moment, you may be, it may be a little bit difficult to understand, but I would like to, at this moment, I would like to do my best to give you the overall picture of this class. Surprisingly, I'm 100% sure that in a month or two, if I give lecture again on this subject, you will have much clear ideas. And even though this is a case for playing game, this kind of approach could be applied to when you are developing some uh, reinforcement algorithm for stock investment or uh, engineering uh, problem, I think these sequence are very similar. And even though today's lecture is on our lecture, I was trying to start with uh, what are the future of uh, machine learning. And I started with this, this uh, figure. Uh, he is not smiling, so let's. This is much smiling, and he has uh, some tooth has black. He's still smiling. It ha he has to smile. I'd like to be happy, so um, um, he has to go to dental clinic to clean his teeth. So, uh, and. Uh, I started with uh, some models that will be the subject of our class, and I was also mentioned about the future of uh, machine learning. Also, I was talking about 
the future of uh, machine learning with respect to the history. And I mentioned, I introduced some important milestones. And I also was talking about the future of machine learning. And um, very important part of that is uh, innovation of devices and computer structures. And market driving force of uh, machine learning could be a uh, automotive vehicle or Bitcoin or post Corona era. Now, uh, uh, I'll, I would like to give you a short introduction of our final goal of our class. A final goal of my class is to give you the basics of deep reinforcement learning with related AlphaGo. And I gave you a brief overview of three different uh, models being used in AlphaGo. First one was first one was the Pyrol, that is Polish network using the linear activation function, and the second one is the CNN-based AlphaGo Polish network. And these networks are being used when they are playing game. Uh, it will be a, a Polish network, or it may work as an agent one or agent two. If you have previous policy network, it can be copied to agent one and it may have copied to agent two. They are playing games. When they are playing games, there have to be considered many different scenarios or episodes. When you are developing some episode, there are three different methods, Monte Carlo three, three search or temporal different method. And then you update and score. That is uh, called the reward, you update score. And finally, you will obtain the value network that will score the best positions to put your stone at the next stage. And, and these are the answers. And this answer will be a J dash, and that will give you feedback of your policy network. And using this gradient descent, you update this policy network. Those are the training process of being used in deep reinforcement learning. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, because we have uh, almost a week, a month of classes, and we talked a lot about the basic uh, principles of deep learning. But it may be a little bit bored, or we don't know what's going on there. So I would like to give you an overview in, with respect to history and our uh, class target. And once again, I would like to remind you that our previous class will be the basic uh, building block to talk about these advanced models. And thank you for your kind attention. And I think this later on at the end of this semester, you will see that, oh, this is very easy subject to talk about. Thank you. <laughs>